Hey everyone, welcome back to the Cameron Champ series. And uh, while we were listening to uh, the, the last event that he won, the Safeway Open, uh, Johnny Miller was in the booth and he was also presenting uh, the, the trophy and he, he, uh, he had some great comments to offer. And the takeaway move that Cameron has, the beginning of his swing is very, very key. And it's, uh, it's something that we lucked out that it wasn't taught out of him. And that, you know, he gathers everything the same. You remember when the X Factor, uh, if you're old enough, the X Factor theory came out. And it was all about resisting with the lower body and coiling the upper body against the lower body and getting the biggest differential between the hips and the shoulders possible which led to a lot of injury and a lot of hardship. And um, you, you listen to Johnny Miller at the time where this came out. He says, I don't know about this, guys. Um, I, I, I get what you mean by X factor. And if, you, you know, if you're saying that elastic sensation, I don't feel that in the, back, in the backswing at all. My backswing feels very relaxed, but I can tell you I feel it in my downswing. Well, yeah, that's where that kinetic chain engages. So to bring all the elements necessary for you to perform this properly, and this is what we've been teaching for the last 25 years at Wisdom in Golf, no resistance in the backswing. And in several of our videos, including Scully, you've seen our skeleton, our resident skeleton, the vertebrae have built-in stoppers in them called facet joints. They're actually Lego blocks, one on top of the next, and they're not designed for rotation at all. There's a little play in there, but it's a rigid structure. So if you look at Cameron's takeaway, you can see that everything is moving together in that backswing. There's this huge turn in his backswing. His hips are turning beautifully. That left knee is rotating behind the ball because half your knee is your femur. Your femur is your hip. The ball socket system of the hips, that's where the turntable is. So all this is what takes the rib cage and the pelvis and moves it out of the way of that lead arm so that you can get width. And is there anyone out there that has more width than Cameron Champ? Maybe Bubba Watson. Well, guess what? Bubba also lets his hips turn immediately in the backswing as well and has the right knee way behind the ball and the heel way in the air, just like Bobby Jones, Jack Nicklaus, all of the long hitters of that era. Bobby Jones wasn't very, very tall, but he could really whip the snot out of that golf club. So we have this beautiful turn in the backswing. And, and one of the things that I enjoy doing to gather this, and Johnny Miller had an amazing, you know, quip on that. He says, my backswing starts when I tap my right heel. So we have an exercise at Wisdom and Golf called the perpetual motion drill. So if you swing the club back and through without stopping, and let's say you're cutting grass in both directions, you'll notice that there's a very specific timing element to that. So if I'm walking and cutting grass, look at um, Fred Astaire golf dance. Amazing video. Fred Astaire used to be a single digit handicap and he's doing this beautiful demonstration of tap dancing and hitting golf shots at the same time at the Bel Air Country Club. So you watch just before he hits every shot, there's a tap of the left foot and click on the way through. And then on the way back, there's a tap of the right foot. So if you look at, I'm in my follow through, my right foot comes down everything clears into the backswing. I'm actually using the right leg to move everything out of the way. So Johnny Miller said, I tap the right foot to start the backswing. Well, that means he's already in his follow through, taps the right foot to get everything out of the way. So there's a beautiful timing mechanism to start that off. Another way of looking at it, if you look at uh, the best golfers or lumberjacks, or an oldie but goodie of mine called the sledgehammer axe drill. So we have a sledgehammer. 
and let's say the ball is the head of a nail and I want to nail something into a railroad tie. So I take my sledgehammer and now I'm going to heave the sledgehammer back. Well, I'm going to have to move a little forward to heave that sledgehammer back. And you notice I'm not going to just heave and not move. That lead arm, if the rib cage doesn't turn out of the way, that lead arm is going to crash into my rib cage and then it's just going to wrap itself around my body. So as I'm heaving that sledgehammer, notice how everything is turning out of the way at the same time. So heave. Now the brain says, okay, that sledgehammer's got to go through. If I don't move the body, well, look what happens. My right arm crashes into my rib cage because it's out, out over here now, out of the way, and there's no way I have any access to that, to that nail. So the brain has to go get the ground, use the ground to get the body out of the way, so I have access to hammering that nail. So the initial move away from the ball is a kinetic chain. That leg goes into the ground, uses the ground to get the body out of the way. We get width and we gather this beautiful range of motion. So you'll see how that range of motion is what gives you the ability to get rotational momentum in the downswing. And that is what we're going to talk about next week when, uh, when you see just how beautifully he clears out of the way of that arm unit. And uh, it's a very significant, you know, turbocharge of power in the swing. And it's how that kinetic chain engages and gives itself some beautiful momentum to go that way. All right. So I hope you enjoyed that takeaway video. Can't wait to show you the rest next week. See you then.